So another periodic trend is called electron affinity. And this is the energy that is either released or absorbed when an electron is attached to a gas phase atom to form an anion. And so we're going to find in certain situations energy is given off and in other situations energy is being absorbed during this process. When we look at chlorine and it gains an electron to become Cl-, the electron affinity is actually a negative number. So that means energy is actually being released. And that implies that chlorine is actually going into a more stable state in Cl-. And we can see why when we look at the electron configuration. So neutral chlorine has five p electrons. And remember that six electrons fill a p subshell. So by gaining an electron from Cl to Cl-, we have added a p electron and we have filled the p subshell. And we've discussed this before that having full subshells tend to produce a certain measure of stability. And here that stability is shown by energy being released during the addition of an electron. So in general, atoms with large negative electron affinities are said to have a high electron affinity. And that means that they actively try to gain electrons. So they want to gain electrons and energy is being released when they do that. So the exact opposite is true. If the sign on an electron affinity is positive, that means we need to put energy into the system in order for the electron to be attached. A good example of this is metals. Metals prefer to give up electrons to become positive. And we saw this when we were talking about the electron configuration of cations that most metals prefer to give up electrons. So here, sodium does not want to gain the electron. And when we look at the electron affinity of sodium, it's actually a positive number. So this means that it will take energy for sodium neutral to gain an electron to become sodium minus. In general, atoms with large positive electron affinities are said to have a low electron affinity. That means that the atoms tend to resist gaining electrons. The, the periodic trends of electron affinities are the same as z-effective. So remember, z-effective increased as we went up and to the right on the periodic table. And so this makes sense. As z-effective increases, that means we have a stronger positive charge. And so it's going to be easier to add an electron. There is one very important exception to our periodic trend for electron affinities, and that's the noble gases. Noble gases actually have very low electron affinities. So based off the periodic trend, we would expect noble gases to have very negative electron affinities, and that's not true. Noble gases do not want to gain electrons. So here we have neon gaining electron to become neon minus. The electron affinity is a fairly large positive number. And the reason why is noble gases already have a filled subshell. So they're happy. They really don't want to gain or lose electrons. So when we come along and try to make a noble gas gain an electron, like we're showing here for neon minus, we are upsetting the full subshell. And so that's not energetically favorable. And that's why noble gases tend to have very low electron affinities. So this is one important exception to the trend for electron affinities. So uh, electron affinities tend to become more negative as we go up and to the right, but noble gases have relatively large positive electron affinity, which means that their electron affinity is low. So here, if we give you a question and I say rank in order of decreasing electron affinity, of oxygen, fluoron, and neon, the element that's going to have the most negative electron affinity is actually going to be fluorine. It's the one furthest up and to the right in the periodic table, but it's not a noble gas. So the next one over is going to be oxygen, and then actually neon is going to be the lowest or have the least negative electron affinity, and that's because it is a noble gas.